like from where we came from, it's like for us to like have all this and to have an agency of this size and to, to, for all the money that we've been able to make throughout, it's like, or the amount of fun that we're able to have, yeah. you know, the, the trips that we're able to go to, the, the thing, the meals we're able to afford, all this stuff. And the material stuff is not the actual important stuff. It's the freedom of being able to be able to do that. All right, guys, welcome to AG Q&A. You got your host here, John. We got Joanne in the house and we got Albert in the house. So we just came off a great sales conference um, that happened in Monday in, in uh, here in LA. And we had a couple more in Las Vegas. I think there's one in uh, Texas too, right? Phoenix. Phoenix. And uh, we got one there? coming up in Aus- Houston. Houston. I thought there was one in Houston. No. That one's coming up. That one's coming up. Yeah. So it's pretty fun. Um, first off, for the people that choose not to go, what would you guys say to, to the agents that's in their backyard and there's trainings available for them. What's, what's the, the motivation level of an agent? What would, what would be the best uh, thing you could say to them? Just go. Right. Yeah. Just go because um, every single time I hear the agents going into these conferences, even if they aren't um, like the convention or like our annual convention, I hear that a lot of the agents take a lot of really good advice Um, there's also, I think that within the, um, journey of each agent, they kind of get lost a little bit, or sometimes they struggle and they at times may not even realize that they're struggling, but going back into, you know, a sales conference where, um, agents who are being successful are speaking and are talking about topics that really do matter and can impact your performance, um, are really good. Just like a refresher for everyone to just kind of like, um, tweak up whatever it is that you're doing and kind of just get back into the game. What do you think goes on with an agent when they're not around? When, you know, I'm pretty sure they get invited. You know, there's an upline. There's yeah. like a And the events are free. Message. Yeah, there's a group yeah. message. They know about it. And then, of course, you see it on the emails. You're getting multiple emails about it. So if you guys enjoy, I'm saying it too many times. Thanks for joining us so far. That's all I remember continue to share with other people we, do, we do probably need to redo it right hey guys thanks for joining us uh, if you guys have found this stuff helpful up to this point or you guys would like to see some other stuff please uh, like and subscribe and uh, create a comment so we can uh, cover that next topic and continue watching the show would you think the agent doesn't know or they're not aware what goes on the thought of an agent that chooses mm-hmm. not to go i think they're being willfully blind right? yeah because <clears throat> the thing is like they're not checking their emails they're not on the group chat they're not they're not well, uh, even if they are, right? Because like they're well, sometimes they, they are. They be, I mean, I feel like most agents are in one place at least, seeing the content that's being invited to everyone, right? Yeah. So the information, the data has crossed either their <laughs> their eyeballs or their earballs, and then they've 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 yeah. the, the data is passed through, but it's like completely passed through their brain. Yeah. So I mean, like for those those agents, I mean, my question is, do you even work, bro? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And and I think it, and I think it's part of the reason why the people don't show up to these events. It's usually ego. It's usually which we talked about a little bit last week. Mm-hmm. But I think it's it's ego because either they're not doing well enough, and then they just tell themselves, "Oh, that they can't help me." You know, like my situation is different because you know I got this personal stuff going on, or you know they don't know my situation. Which, first of all, no one cares about your situation like that, yeah. and they're not going to care about it if you don't care about it. Yeah. Like it's not that no one cares about you. It's just you gotta give people reason for them to care. And most people just take this sad sack approach of like, woe is me, you know, like it's not working out because of this, this, and that. And when people try to give you some advice, you're like, that doesn't apply to me. Yeah. And you're not trying to like apply anything differently. The other reason why people don't go is if they're not speaking or if they're not they're they're not uh having an opportunity to like really shine because it, their ego makes them think that they're more important to this event than it actually is. Mm. And where it's so it's like it's like they're not going for the for the wrong reasons, thinking like, well, it's not all about me, right? And then the final one is like, if uh, but well, no, there's more than more than that. But the the next another one, point, <laughs> the next one would be the, the the people that just think like, I already know everything, and then they have a static mindset in terms of their business, and they think they're reaching. Which for those people, I I I urge you to think about: Are you where you want to be financially? Yeah. Is this where you you want your career to to, to end up? And like. I'm sure no one can answer and be like, yeah, this is cool. Like, I'm just going to stay like this for the rest of my life. Like, you know, we're, we've, we've moved up in, in this business and, you know, but the thing is 
I know there's a lot more we can do. Right. I know there's a lot more that I want and a lot more that I want for my people. So it's like, why, why should I give up there? And, and then lastly, I mean, like, even if you feel like you have everything, have it all together, like Joanne mentioned, you should go there and just kind of recalibrate. Even if you feel like you're in a good spot, go and recalibrate, listen to these other people. And most importantly, like if you have, if you are doing well, it's almost your responsibility to, to contribute back to the group and share. So other people can, can, uh, at least pick up a portion of what you're doing or at least spark some ideas in their head, even though they won't apply right away. But the thing is like, you could be a value to this entire event, but you're choosing not to. I get frustrated. Like Me too. what, what can we say to you? What can we do for you? The training's there. It's free. We're giving you the, basically the, the outline of how to be successful. And you're choosing not to take that step. You yeah. feel that, Whatever you're doing currently, wherever you're at, aside from that event, it's more important right. than the knowledge you're going to gain from it. The, the worst is when you talk to them afterwards and you're like, how come you didn't come to like, oh, I would have, except, you, you know, I got to go pick up my kids. Yeah. And, do, and I'm like, what did you do if there was a really an important, well, there was really an important event that like you couldn't miss, you'd find or a way like, for your kids to get picked up, right? Yeah. Or like, what if, Planful, what if right? that was like a client meeting or something like that, that you had to show up for to like cover a family, like then you would make the time for them, but you wouldn't make the time to learn. Yeah. Or it was happy hour. They got a yeah. lunch out of some, some, somebody that'd be like, Oh, let me see if I can get a, get a babysitter. Let me see if I can get someone <laughs> to pick, pick up my yeah. kids. So the priorities are all wrong. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. And then, I mean, I get it. I kind of get it, but I don't get it. But I, I get the the drag into it. You know, like, okay, the one we went to, okay, coming from Cerritos, it was in Los Angeles. It was like by Echo Park, right across Echo Park, basically. Right. So it was like an hour plus of a drive without traffic. But there's some people that came all the way from like Ventura. Victorville, Ventura. Ventura. San Diego. Someone came out from San Diego. And then um, John Gavin came all the way from Seattle, yeah. Washington. Bakersfield. Um, yeah. Some NorCal people. Ralph came out from uh, yeah. like Fresno area, right? Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. Bakersfield. We have Darren who went to the one in Vegas and he Blew was out. out like in Oklahoma. Yeah. Right. So in reality, I don't know. I think the really good thing about FL is that they're now making them like in all the major cities. So it makes it a lot easier for everybody mm -hmm. to kind of just participate into what's actually closer to you. Maybe flying all the way out to California isn't your best option, but maybe flying out to somewhere closer is. Yeah. But it, it's a, a reflection of their importance in their business or where they want to go. Cause yeah. it's like, okay, why are you here? <laughs> well, maybe that's why you're not here. <laughs> you're not here at all. You're not even working. You're not even trying. Right. So was from a manager standpoint, why should we work with these individuals? Why should we give them the extra time if they don't put the time for themselves? It's not, it's not even really working with them most of the time. Cause like they want to call or tax and just kind of, kind of just tell you, yeah, I would get back into it, but you know, this and, but this and, but this, and it's like, all right, if you don't take yourself seriously, you don't take this event seriously. You don't take any, any of this seriously. Like how can anyone actually take you seriously? Yeah. Like what all the, all the things that you would like to go better in your life, you have answers in front of you, you have solutions in front of you. Mm. And the thing is you can go to these events and not, even if it's not anything in the particular training, just being around other people, like we had a lot of new agents that were newer managers that went up and spoke. Right. Mm. I really enjoyed those. Yeah. Like for me, I was like, it's refreshing. It's refreshing. It kind of like puts you back in the spot of it's like, I, I need to get that hunger back. Mm. Like, you know, cause once you, once you have a little bit of success, sometimes you become a victim of your own success and you kind of like, you, you think you've made it to a certain level, you achieve to a certain level and you just think like, all right, well, I don't need to do all that stuff anymore. Where in reality, it's like, that's what got me here in the first place. So we need to get, we need to get back to that. And I think the people that choose not to go because of whatever silly reasons, like they're missing out on all of that. So it's their, it's their attitude. That's actually going to hold them back. It's not, it's not the, oh, because you didn't come, come to the training, you, you won't learn what we need. You need to learn. It's just like, it's, it's, your 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 appearance or your 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 absence is a declaration of how seriously you take yourself in this business. Yeah. yeah. And so my second frustration, I would see agents there, they are present, meaning that they attended, but they're not listening. Physically there, mentally not. <laughs> yeah, they're physically there. They're not listening. They're so not they're taking like any notes. Most of the time they're outside, they're taking breaks, you know, they're they're chatting it up with other people. 
So they're there on a social level instead of a training and, and, and getting better level. What would you say to that? How do you, how do you, how do you deal with these agents? It's like, bro, why did you wake up this early just not to pay attention? <laughs> yeah. Like they have no, um, I think for those agents or for agents that are attending the events, they should go in there with an intention, the intention to at minimum learn something new, you know? Yeah. So I think the socializing and everything like that can come after the event, mm -hmm. but not during the event. And I, I think it's really disrespectful for people to just show up to the events and not give the speakers the respect that they, you know, that they have earned in a sense, because not every, like you're, you're not going to have an agent that's brand new and not doing well, speaking to you about how well you should be doing um, at these events. They're all for the most part, really, you know, people that you guys can all learn from. So. And it's really, it's really selfish too. Cause the thing is like, you know, these people prepare to go out there and speak and the, to the share and ho hopefully they're trying to connect with somebody, yeah. somebody out there could, could use this. And then like you go, you go in there and you're, you're not paying attention. It's like number one, I guarantee you most of those people are not doing that well in their business. Right? Yes. Uh, and it's like, you're the one that really needs to hear this in the first place and you're not taking this seriously, but also like, even if you were doing well and you're doing okay. And then this person's up there talking like these, the amount of support that you can provide to that person and encouragement by just paying attention. I mean, it means a lot to that person because yeah. you know, it's like, we're all here for each other. And then like everyone, everyone's trying to contribute something, whether you're actually up there speaking or you're there giving attention and you're you're providing some type of support system for one another and then you're just there because you want to be seen like what is that is that like that, so. is that the reason why like you, you just want to be seen like oh look i'm i'm a serious business person i'm here in my suit i'm here in my my no. my, my dress and i think it's the mentality of you know when you have to go to work so you don't get fired type so i'm here <laughs> i'm clocked in right. that's about it <laughs> it's that mentality it's like but this this is for you Right. Yeah. And for your business, because I mean, at the end of the day, it, it is nice to see like your downlines there and participating and maybe taking notes and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's for their business to grow. It's not for anybody else, but for your individual business to to grow and take it where you guys want to take it. And I think that's part of um, a culture we can build on. Right. Because like you get to determine like there was a squad out there. Um, they were in the far right, but they were all like, strong. They all attended. They all like cheered on for each other. And then when, when somebody, um, I think Trey had people had their hands raised, like who's three in like, you know, 20 families, 30 families, they were standing, you know, they have a close tight knit group, but they were like supporting each other and they were strong because they're all working. Right. Yeah. They were there with the purpose. And I think that's a good culture to have because now, you know, okay, we're with some killers, we're with some sharks and we weed off the people that, you know, don't want to participate into it. Yeah. The, the people that don't want to participate, you know, I, ironically, they're the ones that uh, that that usually complain about stuff and mm -hmm. think things not going well or things not going their way. And it's like you know, if you if you if you don't contribute something, you don't participate. It's, it's like, what do you expect to change in your life? What do you expect to change in your business? And I, for me, I, I, I'm just I always find that very curious because you know, for a lot of the people that always always tell us like, yeah. oh, I need to be around other people. Like, how come you guys don't do meetings regularly anymore? And blah blah blah. And I'm like. You don't even show up to these events. It's like it's like it's like you're like you you they wanna, wanted a weekly meeting, but they can come up to once a quarter, once a six months. Well, they're gonna bring up all these all these like excuses, fake excuses as yeah. to why they're not more successful. As to like if I don't, we had this, I would I would do this. If we had that, external factors, and it's just like okay, well, sometimes these things pop up, and then you still don't participate. So it's like just admit it, you don't want to work. Yeah. Just admit it, you don't you don't believe in yourself. Just admit it's funny, it, you don't want to do it. We do have weekly meetings. We have weekly calls. Right. Yeah. We have 2 p.m. and I have my 1.30 calls. Yeah. So there's, like, I mean, there's, there's this Q&A. There's offices everywhere that are open for them to just like come in and work if they need to. And they still don't show up. So so how would you challenge these individuals? Well, what's the best challenging method in a sense? Instead of just like, you know, going down on them and just beating them up. <laughs> like, I, mean, I, well, I, wouldn't beat, I wouldn't beat up on any of them yeah. until they ask for help. Right. Okay. So, because the thing is, like, I'm not going to reach out like, oh, who didn't show up? And I'll be like, all right, hey, how, how come you didn't come? How come right. you come to the meeting? Because it's like, you don't have to come to the meeting. Everybody's an adult. <laughs> right. And if, and if you're perfectly good where you're at and you're not complaining about anything, cool, more power to you. Right. Like, it'd be nice to have you there because you could, you could lend that support to somebody else that's there that might, might have been in your position that you could, you can lend, you can impart some wisdom to. I mean, who knows? But I mean, like, if, if they're fine with it, I'm, I'm never going to reach out to them. But, for the people that say like, 
they, they reach out afterwards and they're like, Oh, can you go over this with me? Or, you know, I, I'm struggling with this. I'm like, so-and-so just talked about it at the conference and all these people were there and they all did the same thing. It's like, how come you can't make the effort to, to, to come out? And it's like, they they be like, I didn't have gas money or whatever. It's like carpool, find a way. It's like, it's not going to change on its own. Like, I, I really don't understand that mindset. Yeah, it's disappointing, Um, but we always have more. <laughs> so for the people that are listening that, you know, maybe this made you feel bad, good. <laughs> but maybe maybe it's good for you to, to actually show up to, to something here and there. You will learn something. So moving on to the next topic, we're going to go over some of the topics that we did actually pick up. Uh, start with you, Bert. What, what, what's the uh, out of all the the things you, you've uh, you've heard from um, the speakers that spoke? What what stuck to you the most? Um, I really liked I really liked all the uh, the newer speakers. Like Ralph's was really I really enjoyed Ralph was his. really good. Yeah, because the thing is like he, he yeah was, things for you uh, you can share for the people that didn't show up. <laughs> so this is the the summary edition of the sales conference of yeah, the good stuff. The synopsis. <laughs> well, I mean for. For, for Ralph Alvarado, he, you know, he, I invited him out from Josh and Alondra's team and, and from Prevail. The tatted life agent. If you the tatted life agent on, 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 oh, on IG. Yeah. Hilarious guy. I mean, I, I, I love that guy. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to hear a different perspective. So I asked him, I, I asked him to come on train and then, you know, he talked, he talked about uh, dial days, how to manage it, how to manage the emotion, emotional part about it, uh, track your, your dials, mm -hmm. uh, his, his whole system. So he basically broke everything down. And the thing is, he's very relatable. Like the thing is he had a very different perspective from how most people go up there. And, you know, a lot of people prepare and they try to be very polished, whereas he was just himself. Yeah. And, and he had a good psychology of the process. Right. Like you would, you would think because of the way that he spoke and he, like, he didn't, he didn't try to, uh, I guess code switch and like try to talk in a more professional tone. Okay. Okay. You know, some people, some people do that. It's it, sometimes it's not very authentically them. Right. And you kind of lose some of their, their aura and their personality of how they actually are. Right. We didn't get, we didn't lose any of that with him. Like he definitely dialed down on the curse words, which <laughs> we appreciate that, I yeah. guess. But, um, but yeah, no, I think, I think it was just, it was just really real authentic. Uh -huh. And on top of that, I mean, it was really good practical training. Like it was really, really helpful stuff that new agents, agents that have been around that lack focus agents that, that, that have been around that maybe get too get too emotional sometimes. Like, you know, all that stuff was very applicable. So the thing is he was able to, and it, I guess it's nothing brand new because there's other forms of it out there, but, you know, he was able to share his perspective. And I think because of his personality, because of who he is as a, as a person, I think, he connected with a lot of other people that normally could be up there and listening to someone that's very polished and be like, yeah, I don't, yeah, it makes sense, but I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. You know, so I think, I think everyone has something to offer if they put in the work and try to share something real and authentic. Yeah. If I could um, share what if you you're working, by the way. Yeah. Like for all the, all the people that don't work at all, they're, they're always the first ones to be like, well, the way I would do it is, but it's like, this, it's like but you don't do anything. It's like, well, like what are you sharing? <laughs> so if we could share a couple of things that, that Ralph shared, um, he came up with or he he got a uh, dialer um, lead tracking. Uh, no, no, it's a dialing tracking numbers, um, tracking sheet, tracking sheet. Uh, if you guys have the Google Drive, I downloaded it. I added it to, to the Google Drive already. It should be on the field materials. But the psychology that he mentioned was, you know, people can think that they're going to work all day but they don't set a start time and a stop time. So if you actually set a start time and a stop time, he, he related it back to the oil field that if their manager said, if we finish early, if we did all our work and we finish early, we get to go home. So it motivated them to work and be disciplined in those hours of their start time and, and stop time. But if he just said, you know, I'm going to work from any time in the morning until the, the, the night <laughs> comes, comes in, you can lag throughout the day because you don't have a, a sense of focus. So on his dialer tracking sheet, he split it up in three, three breaks. And so he split up 300 dials into 100 dials at a time. And so he had a start time and a stop time. And then each one is, is recorded. So you got a hundred here, take a break. Now you feel, you felt a little refreshed. It's kind of like you get to run your errands. You go back and do dials again, same process. And you go back and, and do your dials again. So he got it from Josh Williams. And the goal of that dial tracking sheet is three things. You either make one sale a day, you have at least two presentations, 
and then you did 300 dials. And so this takes the emotion out of it because now you have timed schedules. And at the end of the day, you get to reflect back and look at it. Did you really work when you felt like, or you thought that you worked? And then you look at your dials and he had a, he had a, an example of a, an agent. Yeah. This lady said, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a day. I've been working all, all day and it's so hard. And then he said, let me see your dial tracking sheet. They made 15 dials in the entire day. <laughs> so now was it really work or was it really just a mental thing where they probably reviewed their, their sheets, went over some uh, scripts and did, did everything but work. Took a bunch of bathroom breaks, asked people questions and like, how, what doing- product would you use? And then just just finding ways to distract yourself because you don't yeah. actually do the work. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not that you don't want to do the work. It's just maybe you're not very, you don't have, you lack clarity in terms of what you should be doing or why you're doing it. Yeah. And then if you have a, so if you have a tracker sheet and it just says like, I need to knock, knock out either this many calls or I need to get one sale on my belt or to get to do two presentations, which two presentations I feel is kind of low. But I mean, I get, I get where he's coming from. Right. For baby steps, right? Right. So like if, if, if you focus on just accomplishing one of those three, whichever comes first, then you could be done for the day. It doesn't mean you have to finish for the day, but at least you've accomplished something. You've at least been productive. Yes. You've had a, a productive right day. Right. But even though it's two presentations, if you if you throw that out in you know six days, seven days, five days, that's ten presentations to fourteen presentations. You're bound to make like three to five sales, right? Somehow, right? John, John Wetmore has that saying, right? It's like, did you did you really did you dial all day, or did you take all day to dial? Right, right. So that's a good way for you to track yourself and. You know, have a mental, you know, it's like a W2 mindset. <laughs> you clocked yeah. in, you clocked out. And then this is what needs to be done before you get the clock out. That's like very beneficial to the agents because then they can have like a visual of, you know, this is what I actually got done as opposed to just having it in your mind that you worked all day when you really didn't work all day. Right. And in each box, so there's a hundred box per per break, you mark it, you make, you make a, a X, if no answer, a line, P for a presentation, S for a sale. So you kind of see which one and you get to see how many people you spoke to. So it's even better because a lot of people, sometimes they, they speak to one person, they get thrown off, they get rejected and they, they throw their whole day off. When at the end of it, you probably just only made your first four dials and you felt like it doesn't work. Yeah. If you don't have a daily objective or, or objective for your phone session, then yeah, it's really easy for emotions to get, get, you know, get you caught up and then distract you. But if you, if you don't have time for it because you literally need to follow or play this game <laughs> and you stick along with it, then your emotions don't mean anything because it's just part of the job. Yeah. So it's, it's a good way to just track things and keep you away from the, the mental part about like sucking yourself out. Right. Any other, um, I know you weren't there, but um, any other good speakers that you got to that stuck to you? I mean, I liked uh, Elisa's. It was just, it was just uh, interesting to hear because I actually, <laughs> I invited her out. Which uh, one's Elisa? Which which topic did she talk about? Building a team. Okay. Yeah, she was talking about like she saw she she ran into someone else from another. Oh, and Vicelia, yeah, her her aunt yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. And then she, and then she she wanted all that stuff, and you know, it's like so she saw the opportunity. So that I, I invited her out, and then she was like, she's like, oh, I'm so nervous. I don't I don't know. If I'm, she goes she goes thank you. I'm so honored, but I'm so really <laughs> nervous. I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, like if you're nervous, I mean, it's because you haven't done it. And well, if, she you, if you want- don't do this, how can you? Get actually get better and not be nervous in the future. Was she the one that said like she didn't sleep and she only had like three hours of sleep because she was so nervous? She was so nervous. She prepared for her whole thing and in three hours only had three hours of sleep. But she was really good. She didn't didn't seem nervous at all. Yeah, and then yeah, some of them were like nervous because they're 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 more um, comfortable in Spanish, but that to talk in English. Or (laughs) I mean, it's just I mean, look, I remember the first time I I spoke in public. It's a little nerve wracking because you just think like everyone's that got these eyes on you and like they're yeah. judging you yeah. where, where it's like, you know, if you, if you bomb, like who cares? It's just the same, it's the same, like a presentation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you're, you're presenting to more people and you're bombing to more people, but, yeah. <laughs> but if you did bomb, whose fault is it? Because you didn't prepare. Right. Cause you had all the time to prepare for it. And it's a bomb nonetheless, it, whether it's a small bomb or a big bomb. It's all... <laughs> Either way, you're going down in flames. But see, it doesn't it doesn't matter because it, see the reason why it doesn't matter is that you can keep coming back. Yeah, I mean, you can't be so terrible public speaking where they were like, "Oh, that's so bad, we can't invite this person back." But if if you're trying, the thing is, you continue to to, to work on it, you continue to improve. Yeah, 
if you're doing something that just means, see, the reason why we had these people go up in the first place is because they've done something in this business, right? Mm -hmm. So either they built a team, they they have a good quality, they developed a system, you know, they 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 sell a lot of sell a lot of insurance, whatever it is, they're successful. So they know methodically and systematically how to get to success to some degree. Yeah. Now the thing is, is like to to now present this to an audience, it's a different layer to it, right? So then the thing is like, but you can only have like for people that want to go up there and train because they like they think like, hey, everyone just like likes me. I just want to go up there and train because I'm a great guy and you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, what are you gonna teach them? Yeah. Like, yeah. So the accomplishment has to come first. Right. Like you, you have to go and put in the work and you need to achieve something to some degree. Different levels, it, it like like we mentioned, appeals to different types of people. So I'm like, everyone has some value to offer if you're working and you you have something that other people can recreate and find success in too. Yeah. Some people want that spotlight. Yeah. So what were some of her points? Like what good points does she make? Well, I mean, she, she talked about, you know, actually caring about her people and, you know, like see, seeing the value and the opportunity for herself. And it's selfish to not be able to share that same thing with other people, which, I mean, I feel this all the time because I'm like, like from where we came from, it's like for us to like have all this and to have an agency of this size and to, for all the money that we've been able to make throughout, it's like, or the amount of fun that we're able to have, yeah. you know, the, the trips that we're able to go to, the, the thing, the meals we're able to afford, all this stuff. And the material stuff is not the actual important stuff. It's the freedom of being able to be able to do that. And I'm like, for plenty of my friends, like, you know, they're living paycheck, to, not paycheck to paycheck, but everything's accounted for. So they can't ever go beyond that level really. Right. Right. It's so, a restriction. Yeah. And then, the, and then it doesn't matter how much harder they work at work. Like they're stuck because yeah. their salary is their salary and they already have all these different bills and financial, financial obligations. It's like, they can't get out of that, but we can do that. Yeah. I think she mentioned that too. She, she was like, until she saw like her family friend that lived in a nice house that had a lot of things she didn't see herself in that position because she was working like two jobs. Right. And so she got basically like honey potted. <laughs> she went, <laughs> she went over their house. She's like, wow, we have a nice home. I want that. <laughs> what do you do? And it's just like, well, I do insurance. I'm in. <laughs> Are you guys hiring? <laughs> no, I think that, that was I think, it. That's what she's I, saying. I, that, I think that's a very big component of, of this business is to be able to show other people the opportunity. Cause the thing is like a lot of people have a ton of latent potential. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of people have you know hidden potential from within that they never get to tap into because they just believe everything else that they want is out of their reach mm. because that's just the environment they they came up in or they just never had that that bit of self belief. But if especially for people that are not that polished or people that are newer into their success, you know, for them, for a lot of people, they're like, oh, well, this person can do it. Like, I wonder what the, what what I'm not doing, and then you know, maybe maybe that just gets sparks that curiosity get some start inquiring and start looking into things and then thinking like, yeah, maybe I could do that too. So I think, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really cool thing to be, because I, you know, you and I were just like normal dudes. Right. And I think sometimes people think like we're really smart, which I'm like, Trick you, you should hear some of our private conversations. <laughs> but I mean, like the, the thing is we've strung, we strung together enough, enough, uh, information that we've collected over the years, enough data, enough, you know, skills, all the stuff, we strung everything together and be able to tie it all together to make it a business. Yeah. And which almost anybody can do. And then, you know, don't have to be the same exact skills, skill set, but do whatever, do whatever you're best at and just keep, keep working at it and keep multiplying. And you can get to a point where you can build a business out of it. Yeah. And it's actually good when um, the older speakers speak, they have yeah. so much experience that what they're saying, it gets more concise and more concise. Right. So I actually like Dom's uh, topic, uh, bringing it back to basics. And he just brought it back. It's like, dude, we, we get to such a level. We try to complicate things. And he just broke it down to three things. This is the three things agents need. You got to work on your lead flow, your workflow, and your training, right? You can't have one or without the others, okay? Because if you have a, um, a lead flow, you have the training flow, but you're not working. You don't have to work. Dude, you're not going to get the results. If you have the good workflow and you're here for training, but you're not buying leads, you got nobody to sell, right? So if you look at all these three aspects, um, it's just a matter of time until you get successful. So if you got the leads, you got the work, but you're not training, that's just a skill that'll, that'll, that'll get there in the future. But those are the, the main points. Um, so the last couple of minutes, uh, I know we spoke. Why don't you share a little bit quick about your topic and I'll share mine. 
well, my topic was putting the odds in your favor. So I talked, I talked about statistics and odds, like uh, gambling odds. Um, yeah, JP really had great answers. Like he was right on point. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was like, what, what are the odds that that the uh, blackjack that the player wins? You know, when they sit down at a table, it's like it was forty two percent, right? Yeah. And then what are the odds the house wins? It's forty nine percent. And then the remaining percentage you 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 would tie, right? right? So the thing is, I'm like, that's that's probably the main analogy that I would go with when it comes to the odds because it's like if you're if you're willing to go and sit in a uh, you know these odds. And the things you're willing to sit in there and continue to play, you knowing that you're going to lose, you know, statistically speaking, 49 versus 42 percent of the time, overall you're going to lose. But it's fun though. No, it's <laughs> it's fun. So you got the money to do it, then that's one thing. But if like you're a degenerate gambler and thinking like I'm going to make my living, or yeah. you know, yeah. I, every time I get a paycheck, I'm going to go and take all that and like yeah, that's make money idea. off of that to to, to yeah. be able to afford all the things that I want. It's a terrible plan. Yeah, it's a bad shortcut. <laughs> Right. And, you know, and that that speaks to the mind of the person. I mean, sometimes it's a sickness. I mean, I know people in my family, that, 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 that. but also it's a, it's a you're 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 lacking belief in yourself because shouldn't you focus on something where you know you can work and then you can consistently get results. And like the odds are, I mean, our odds here is like, you know, out of every three people you talk to, you'll sell one. Right. Right. Just make just a company or sales average. Right. A right. very general one, which. Generally, it's true. So the so the thing is, if you know you know those are the odds, and you're, you you may think to yourself, I'm not, "Those aren't very good odds. I'm going to lose two times out of the three times." But the thing is, if you keep coming back and you keep keep continuing to sell, I mean, if you stack all these things up, you're actually going to win. Yeah. And I was talking about like how the house never loses. If you actually just like flip the narrative and just made yourself into the house, because the house is always going to continuously be there, right? The house is always going to keep keep having the money, keep. Keep continuing to put into it, waiting for people to come to their tables, waiting for people to come come bet on their sports, and then they know overall they're going to win. Mm-hmm. And I think that's exactly what we do because it's like as long as we I keep going back to work, I'm going to I'm going to win. Yeah. Because the thing is, I may not win each individual hand, I may not win each, each individual bet, but the thing is because I'm consistently there overall. Like I'm going to continue to understand the odds better. I'm going to know the numbers better. I'm going to improve the you know s- slight ratios here and there. So the thing is that like, you have the opportunity to do it. You just have to just not look at yourself like I'm a hobbyist. I'm gonna come in and just play a few hands and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave when I when I lost too much money. Right. Because that's a terrible plan. Yeah. But if you're on the other side of the uh, other side of the uh, table and you're you're at the house, you really can't lose. Yeah. And uh in gambling, there's this thing called the the Martingale um uh strategy. Yeah. Basically, let's say you bet a hundred bucks and you lost a hundred dollars. So the Martingale strategy is you double down. Right. So now you bet 200. So just in case that 200 wins, now you, you recoup the 100 and you still want another 100. Right. Now, let's say the 200 loses, you Martin Gale again. Now you had to bet 400. So it's a, it's a guaranteed, um, I would say, strategy until uh, basically you run out. So that's why casinos have a set limit. Okay. So if it's a table of 100 minimum, they'll have a maximum of 5,000. So you can't continue to Martin Gale until you're back even. So, but in this business, those progressive negative, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in this business, it's basically the same thing. So a lot of people, a lot of agents, they get scared. They buy one pack of lead. They get scared. Maybe they don't sell it or they don't work hard enough on it and they don't want to rebuy anymore. They don't want to double down. Um, Jack, Jack, you mentioned that. It's like, dude, the, the and a lot of top producers mentioned that too. The best way to make more money and get more, more presentations in, you double down and buy more leads. No, yeah, and that's totally true. Because like, if you spend like two, 300 bucks, and you don't sell anything, no one will be surprised. Right. Everyone's like, well, statistically, you're, that's not really in your odds are really not in your favor, especially if you're spending the two, three hundred bucks that you're that means you're probably kind of new. Yeah. And that also means you know your skills and your experience is not up there yet. Mm. So that so if you're doing that consistently. Now the thing is like if you're spending a thousand bucks, you're probably gonna sell. Yeah. If you're spending two thousand bucks, almost for certain you're gonna sell because the odds are so much in your favor. Now, if you spend if you spend like Four thousand bucks or ten thousand bucks, there's like no matter how terrible you are, as long as you're willing to work those, you're going to sell. So there, you're going to have so many laydowns. No, yes, there is there is no uh, uncertainty about about yeah. that. The, the more the higher and higher you go. Yeah, going back to the odds, uh, one agent said it the best. He said, "Think of this lead system. It's like a vending machine. You put in a dollar, you get five back out. But if you put more dollars, you're going to get more than five back out if you're putting the odds in your favor and you're working." So going back to the three things, you still got to have the lead flow, the workflow, and the training. Flow. How's that work on a vending machine? 
Well, because it, it shouldn't be a vending machine. It should have been like a, a like, slot machine. It's a, it's a, for a vending machine. It should have been a slot it? machine. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't a gambler. Huh? That coil just drops like two candy bars out of it. <laughs> should have been a slot machine, not a, not a vending machine. I think a slot machine. <laughs> but hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I'll quickly go into my topic. Yeah. Uh, so my topic was building momentum one agent at a time. And so the, I had a hard part about trying to, to extend this from a five minute to a 10 minute to a 15 minute time allotment. So good thing we ran out of time and uh, and then we were shortening up. So I, I condensed it because I actually had <laughs> only a condensed uh, amount to talk to, to talk about. But it's just a matter of dealing with your agents or starting off as, as a momentum with an agent. If you don't have any, the momentum really got to start with you. Okay. Because you got to be able to attract. People want to be where you're at. So either you're you're selling the dream or you're living the dream and people get attracted to you and how you're living. Right. So we got to get successful. We got to be able to, to write business, change your lifestyle. People will see that lifestyle. Now you have momentum. Then you can share it with enthusiasm. So a lot of people, they approach this business, they start recruiting, but they just talk about it. Right. And so from an agent, st- from a, a recruit standpoint, they're going to look at you with skepticism saying, oh, well, well show me, <laughs> let me see how you do it first. Once you do it, you're having success. Then they're, they're going to be willing more to join. So from that point, once you're you're living success, you got to really be able to share that and and like broadcast that. So going through your social media, having conversations with your friends, your family members, so that other people will start talking about you, and then you can bring in more people coming in. And then um, lastly, from the training standpoint, you know, you just can't micromanage your agents in a sense. You got to look at it from a perspective of they're not a employee, but they're a business partner. So it has to be a win-win situation and they see something and then that they can get better from in our business. Uh, that was pretty much it. Your training was actually really good. I mean, I, I was, I was kind of surprised. I mean, not because of you, but, but I, I was, I asked you like, what, like how, how long it took you to prepare. And you're like, chat GPT. Huh? I, was like, yeah. Yeah, I did. And it's funny. So when, uh, what was uh, her name? Alyssa. Chat GPT Alyssa. the day before. Alyssa. So Alyssa, Alyssa. Uh, so she came up before me and she was like, Oh, I didn't. Uh, I only had like three hours of sleep, and then later on, after me, Ralph, Ralph had like three pages, and he didn't three print it off pages. a computer. He had it printed, and then he was going through each. And I was like, "Damn, bro!" And it was yeah, single space. Prepared. It was like single space. It was like so, he so had much so much to go over. I was like, "Man, you guys really prepared." <laughs> and so when I chat GPT things, <laughs> it gave me eight sample, eight things to talk about. I was like, "Man, I'm just gonna talk about like three or four. because <laughs> you know what. <laughs> I didn't prepare enough for the other four. I didn't have enough topic for the other four. I'm just going to roll off with these four. I'm going to say FFL got the rest. <laughs> no, but see, I mean, that that actually kind of does, um, that kind of does prove the point where like when people think like they're the secret sauce, they're like, oh, I'm the secret sauce. Like, you know, no one else can do what I do. It's like, get over yourself. Because in reality, like the blueprint for people to be successful, not just at FFL, but in business in general, it's, it's pretty much all the same principles, right? Yeah. So the thing is like all of our, individual experiences like you know you just touched on those four points that you chose to pick out of the eight yeah. chat gpt gave you but then like you you know you related it to your own personal experiences you relate it to how it how it directly impacts agents so the, so the thing is it's more about people connect really to stories they connect really right. to, to people experiences it's not like hey these are the basic tenets of how you how you become successful it's like all right th- these are general general truths but how do i relate that to myself like let me listen to other people who have done it and you know if you can do that then that's how you get your point across yeah and so it started what from nine actually it started eight eight thirty sean mike came out first mm-hmm. i got a free book got uh, punched me in the facebook as i sat in the front you read it yet no you still get this in the bag <laughs> but um it started from nine we finished at four um but last part well what happened afterwards what did we do oh we went bowling it was it was fun i yep. mean a couple couple of our carrier reps wanted to hang out with us and I always oblige, you know, so, you know, so that we went, we went, uh, we went bowling. I thought at first I, I I'm not really a bowler. Yeah. I know you bowl. Yeah, but, you're there. But yeah, I mean, you got three strikes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> quite, I mean, quite, quite a few people, like I, I, I invited them out and they're like, oh, I, don't, I don't really bowl or I suck or whatever. And then things started getting competitive after yeah, a while. Right. Yeah, like, that's fine. And it was a really good, good fun uh, team building experience because for, there were so many dip varying levels. There's like expert levels like John and Cliff. And then and then there's like brand new people like Barr and like you know Paula, Paula and you know Brett said he didn't really play, oh, but, I know. He was, but he was he was not he bad. Knew, he knew what he was doing. 
And so, so the, so the thing is like, you know, with, with all of that, like we, uh, it was, it was nice to see as, as the night progressed, maybe as the alcohol continued to the flow, <laughs> then people started like, you know, helping each other out, giving each other pointers and like yeah. rooting each other on, encouraging. It was, it was like a really fun event. Yeah. We missed you there, John. Yeah. Shout out to Lindsay from America. Yes. She's awesome. Um, thank you for, for, uh, taking us out. Yes. And, um, ethos brett yep. he, he was having fun too so it was awesome i mean these carrier reps they all they, at that time too like Lindsay was asking us questions like you know what would it take you know what what can where can we improve on what would it take for an agent to write more of americo um when we had dinner with brett he was asking the same thing what would it take what, what do you feel like uh ffl want out of ethos and they continue to improve things it's such a good you know, agent carrier relationship that we have with them. And so it's always have uh, fun to have uh, feedback and also some food and drinks. Well, tying, tying that back to our original topic of why you need, you need why you should event, attend these events or mm-hmm. when people don't attend the, these events, what the impact is. I mean, it's a, it's, it, it carried it throughout the day, the day, the whole theme was to give and take. Yeah. Right. So the thing is like, you know, we don't, we don't want America or, or ethos or any of the other carriers come out to just to pay for our stuff. Yeah. It's nice, you know, it's a nice gesture, but in reality, it's like we want to get to know them. We and we want we want to we want them to get to know us. And you know, for us to be able to provide actual genuine feedback rather than you know, just being like, hey, we're gonna free steak dinner on this. Yeah. It's more like, hey, I appreciate appreciate that, but you know, let's get to know each other a little bit more on an informal level so we can share more useful feedback rather than the general corporate speaking, which is like everyone's trying to be very formal and you know, don't want to cross the line. Mm-hmm. It's like once you develop that relationship, then those lines get pushed. Right. And and I like it that way. Right. It's a business relationship, but, you know, it's an ongoing, like, business plus right. relationship. And it's always about respect. Right. I mean, so so the thing is, like, I've learned that. I mean, when I talk to some of these reps, I'm, you know, they, they really like our group. Uh-huh. And then, like, you know, I'm, I'm like, why shouldn't they? We got cool people, right? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's sometimes the, the things they'd say is, like, there's other, other groups that, are not so nice or they're not, they're not so, uh, they try to take advantage. They're just very demanding and pushy yeah. and they just expect stuff, but they don't want to give anything back. So like, you know, they got to do their job. But then reality is like those groups will never get as much, mm. as much help and as much information because it's, it's, it's a two way street. Right. And that's the same exact thing when it comes to this business, anything within this business. Like if you want to get something, you got to give something. That's true. Any last words? Just show up to the next uh, conference, guys, and don't miss them. So the next one is going to be Houston, but the biggest, biggest one is going to be convention. So if you guys haven't, uh, what do you registered. call it? Registered. Uh, what is it? FFLconvention.com? Well, that's the national convention in Dallas. That's February. I think it's January 31st, 1 and 2. Is it? I think, yeah. I think it's earlier. It's usually the first week. Well, go on yeah. FFLConvention.com and it'll have all the information on there. I don't know the exact dates, but it's typically end of January, beginning of February. Right. Yeah. So that's going to be the big one. Um, we, we have like a lot of special guests. David Goggins is going to be there. The lady the from, other lady. Uh, from uh, what is, what's her name? Shark Tank. Shark Tank. Susie. I'm thinking Susie Orman. The, the, the lady? Yeah, the short hair. Yeah, I know I her name. The real estate mogul. I think. Yeah. Barbara Corcoran. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, she's good. There was an athlete too, right? There, um, David Goggins alone, I think that'd be that'd be. But no, there's a there's a pretty big lineup. Um, we need to research ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there. We're checking for granted because I'm. Yeah, good. we're gonna be there. We're gonna have fun, but we're gonna learn. So remember, register for it. It's free. You guys just make your way to convention. Yeah, I mean Dallas is like three hour flight. Yeah, it's cheap. Just get there, figure out a way because the things you're going to learn from this is what's going to elevate you in this business. So going back to the the summary, why are you here? <laughs> How are you going to get better? These things, these trainings, your lead flow, your workflow, and your training. So we'll see you guys then. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you guys want to subscribe, click here. If you want to watch the next video, click here.